Hi, today I present on the topic ground and satellite based observations of ionospheric plasma bubbles and blobs at 5.65 degrees latitude in the Brazilian sector. My name is Ebenezer Ajayabua, a PhD student at the Research and Development Institute of Univap. In this study, we use all sky imager and ionosome to study the occurrence of plasma bubbles and blobs at Arapatins in the Brazilian sector. Simultaneous observations used in this study allow us to propose a new methodology for the observations of plasma blobs using ionosome. Plasma density measurements from swarm satellites are also used to complement the results from the ground-based observations. Studies on the observations of plasma bubbles and blobs using imager system has been done by different authors. The occurrence or the observation of plasma bubbles using ionosonde is also a common place. However, the observations of plasma blobs using ionosonde is not very common. A few studies on the observation of plasma blobs using ionosonde has been done by Pimenta in 2004 and 2007, and recently by Wang in 2019. Figure one shows the location of both ground-based instruments. This unique collocation of the ground-based instruments allow us this unique opportunity to be able to propose this methodology. Figure two shows two air glow images and their corresponding ionograms. The upper panel shows air glow image without any regularities or waves, and its corresponding ionogram show the typical profile of the ionosphere. The lower panel shows an air glow image with plasma bubbles, and its corresponding ionogram shows spread F traces. On the right side, we observe linearized air glow images for the two images shown in the left panel. We show the air glow intensity plots in the right panel, where the upper one shows a uniform air glow intensity, and then the lower panel shows air glow intensity with bubbles or air glow intensity that has depletions. By comparing the ionograms when plasma blobs occur with ionograms when there are only plasma bubbles and then ionograms when there are no irregularities, we are able to distinguish between the ionograms corresponding to plasma blobs and bubbles and other types of ionograms. In figure three, we show the observations of September 2014, where there is the occurrence of plasma bubbles and blobs at the same night. This figure here shows the air glow intensity, and as such, we are able to see the blob and bubbles that were observed in the air glow images. The corresponding ionograms show that when there is the occurrence of plasma blobs, we can observe the extension of the spread depth going beyond the critical frequency of the ionosphere at that night. The blue line here shows where the critical frequency is and the spreads that are observed here may be as a consequence of the plasma blobs observed in the air glow images. Similar results are observed in figure 4 for October 12, 2017. Here also we observe air glow images showing plasma bubbles and blobs and the air glow intensity plots also showing the same bubbles and blobs that are observed in the air glow images. Again, the ionogram shows spread depth, which we have dubbed a typical spread depth. The atypical spread depth shows the occurrence of PSF that extend beyond the critical frequency of that night. It is becoming obvious that when there is the occurrence of plasma bubbles and blobs, the ionograms show ESF that extend beyond the critical frequency of that night. There is another characteristic of the ionograms when the plasma bubbles and blobs occur simultaneously. We observe that the reflections, the second and third reflections, show a different structure. The structures of the reflections show that the Part of the ESF that correspond to higher frequency blobs are not seen in these um, reflections. This is also uh, observed in the first case of the plasma bubble and blobs observed simultaneously. We show a third case. Here also, on October 21st, 2017, we observe simultaneously plasma bubbles and blobs in the air glow images. And in this case also, we see that there is the occurrence of a typical spread F in the ionograms. Again, we see that the ESF extends beyond the critical frequency of the ion ionosphere. And the other characteristic of this ionogram when there is the occurrence of plasma bubbles 
Here is also seen in the reflections that are different from the first ionospheric um, reflections. We see that the spreads that occur beyond the critical frequency are not observed in the second and third reflections. In figure six, we show plasma density measurements from swarm satellites. The measurements or the plots show plasma density peaks at different locations in the images. These density peaks were observed during the observation of plasma bubbles and blobs in the air glow images and the ionograms. It is possible that these peaks are as a result of the EIA shifting its position due to the movement of meridional winds and as such form as a background for the development or the occurrence of the plasma blobs that are observed in the air glow images. Based on these observations or based on these results, we come to the following conclusions. One, blobs and bubbles are associated with high frequency atypical ESF. The atypical ESFs have frequency generally greater than the critical frequency of the ionosphere. The F layer reflection is different from higher order reflections when a typical ESF Okay, the higher frequency part is not reflected in the higher order reflections. And also, based on the spread in the higher frequency part of ESFs, it is possible that blobs could also contain irregularities just like bubbles. Now, based on these characteristics, we can say that when you have an ionosome and then you observe these kinds of characteristics, you can infer that plasma blobs have occurred or it is as a result of plasma blobs. Thank you.